Hey Pards, Woodmaker here. I want to go over some things with you about the Marlin rifle and what I call the Woodermatic because of some changes I've made into it. One of the key things you want to do if you're on the Marlin, uh, Jason is going to post Marauder's website uh, about right now on here. And uh, I strongly encourage you to go there, check things out, look at it real close. A lot of great, valuable advice on there from Marauder and a host of good gunsmiths that's worked on the Marlin before. I'm going to cover a few things that go beyond the, the things they've mentioned. So hang with me. We're ad living a lot of this uh, and just making this video short and sweet as we can as we go along. Uh, I'm going to cover elimination of Marlin Jam. Live round roll-offs on the carrier and the occasional jam-ups and the and ejections and feeding of your ammo and the elimination of the overall length sensitivities of your marlin. If you decide not to modify your bolt face and carrier that I'll discuss, consider chamfering the top part of your magazine well where the round from the magazine starts to enter the carrier. This chamfer should approximately cover the area from about 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. The proper chamfer can be checked by using one of your dummy rounds, put it in there and slide it back and forth until the rim does not catch uh, on that metal that used to uh, be there, a sharp edge. And here's the part I'm talking about. Right there, the top edge. I hope... Jason's got that covered real good. Uh, now on the boat. Let me lay my rifle down. Hold the camera, Jason. Okay. On your boat face, I have totally removed the bottom edge or tip that is underneath the extractor. Now I've left the other two on the opposite side. They are needed. Do not remove those from your boat face but I have made this flush with the rest of the bolt. Um, on your carrier, this is where I've cut my carrier. I come out to where your normal flat spot was and I've totally re removed the hump that's in these carriers and brought it down probably about a quarter of an inch or thereabouts and I've angled it up and stop my angle at the back side of the wings. It's okay to go a little into the wings, but, but uh, watch when you're working this into your rifle. Uh, if you go too far, your round will flatten out too quick. If you leave a hump there, it'll angle up too high and hit the top edge of your chamber. And I'll be right back. I'm going to put my Marlin back together again and show you how it works. Okay, boys, I'm back. Let me show you what an unmodified Marlin looks like when you work the action. Jason's going to focus in a little bit on the action here. When you work your lever, the first round or all your rounds, they come straight up on your carrier and feed straight into your chamber. Then when you go for the ejection, if you notice, Jason can get a good video here and it is hard to see, the one on the carrier and the one ejecting come awful close. Sometimes the rim is only maybe a hair away from the other. Sometimes if you're running fast that can cause a carrier to roll off, uh, roll off your carrier uh, or even a jam in there somewhere and you're sitting there wondering what in the world really happened. Straight feed, straight back, one on the carrier, you can almost hit it. That's the unmodified marlin. Let me show you the Wittermatic. On its feed, it comes up at an angle. The rim of it slides under the extractor and then slides into the chamber. When you come back with it, it doesn't even come close to the next one on the carrier. So it eliminates some roll-offs. The angling also helps eliminate the probability of overall insensitivity. That's a big plus with Marlins. I didn't do that hard enough and I'm gonna just roll it out of there. That's how the action works. And, and, and I can't do it full speed in camera, I'll probably mess up somewhere. But we're going to try this. I've got about eight or nine rounds still left in here and I'm going to feed them through quickly. 
Jason may want to focus a little away from the camera so uh, you get a good view of it. That was nine rounds. And that's the Wintermatic. If you don't have problems with your Marlin, don't do this setup. Don't start cutting on your carrier and your bolt facing. But if you've got a lot of problems, or if you want to experiment and take chances on the spending some extra money, if you really have a boo-boo on buying you a new bolt and a new carrier, uh, it's up to you. I've enjoyed this setup. I shoot it all the time. It's nearly flawless as long as I do my job by working the lever all the way. It is not a short stroke setup, but it can be very quick and very reliable. Thanks guys. See you on down the trail.